This is the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. Orpheus was a legendary musician who could play songs on his lyre that would move even the gods. He was also a lucky bugger because he was going to be marrying a beautiful woman he loved dearly named Eurydice. The day of their wedding arrived and they were having a lovely time. Orpheus was playing his lovely music while Eurydice danced through a meadow, presumably in cheesy slow motion. But in the meadow's tall grass, a satyr was having a cheeky little chill, and as Eurydice danced through, she became startled by the satyr and fell into a pit of vipers. Uh-oh. Eurydice was bitten and killed instantly. So I think, like, instant death might be a blessing in that case. You don't really want to be lying for a long time in a pit of vipers. Orpheus was distraught. He played a song so mournful, people, nymphs and gods alike all wept with sadness. They told him he should take a trip to the underworld to see if he could bring her back. Ugh, squad advice goals. Using his music and his lovely voice, he charmed his way all the way down to Hades and Persephone, the king and queen of the underworld. He played them a song so sweet and emotional that even they wept, and Hades granted Orpheus's wish that he could take Eurydice back to the land of the living. But, as he was king of the dead, there had to be a little condition, didn't there? He can't just be seen granting favours. He said that Orpheus must walk in front of Eurydice the whole way, and he must not look back at her even once, until they've both crossed the threshold into the land of the living. As they began the long slog back to the upper world, Orpheus got more and more doubtful that his wife was behind him. He couldn't hear her move, and she didn't respond when he asked over and over if she was there. I mean, maybe she just didn't feel like talking, Orpheus. She had just died. He'd give her a minute to come round. But Orpheus began to wonder if that old rascal Hades had deceived him. This paranoia built and built as they made their way back through the underworld, and as Orpheus finally reached daylight and crossed the threshold, he couldn't wait another second and turned to look at his wife. But Eurydice had not yet crossed the threshold, so she immediately vanished back into the underworld forever. Maybe Orpheus should have done a little more walking and a little less listening to Mike and the Mechanics. But thank you for listening, I hope you enjoyed. For more stuff like this, see my YouTube and Instagram, both of which are has John Art, because I'm really inventive when I name my accounts. <laughs>